Welcome back to News Across Nigeria, where we tell you what's happening now across the Nigerian Federation. Before we continue, let's remind you that all our top stories can be found on our website, and that's channelstv.com and on youtube.com forward slash channels web. Do visit m.channelstv.com to see us live on your mobile device. You can also download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS, and Windows phones from their respective stores. We'd also like to encourage you to use the eyewitness feature in the Channels TV app. If you have pictures or videos you'd like to share with us, just tap the app on your device, swipe to reveal the eyewitness menu, and follow the instructions. To national security and in the northeast, at least 42 Boko Haram terrorists have been killed while many escaped with gunshot wounds. Troops on patrol, codenamed Operation Tiger Claw, raided their camp at Gangare village in Kokawa local government area of Bornu state. About 38 women and 42 children were rescued and from the insurgents and taken to the military medical facility in Baga for checks. A statement by the acting director, Army Public Relations, Colonel Sonny Usman, says the patrol team also recovered 504 rounds of ammunition, one sports utility vehicle, 34 cans of PMS, automated gas oil, and 55 motorcycles. Meanwhile, suspected Boko Haram terrorists also attacked Bakindutse community, killing one person and injuring four others, but they were repelled by troops on routine patrol. One suspect has also been arrested. The bill prohibiting open grazing has gone through the second reading at the Benway State House of Assembly. The bill is aimed at addressing the persistent attacks by herdsmen on communities in the state. The executive bill, which was sent to the lawmakers by Governor Samuel Otom, outlaws open grazing of livestock and establishment of ranches in Benway State. When passed into law, the bill criminalizes grazing in any parts of Benway State which appears to have been mostly affected by the activities of herdsmen in the country. In the northwestern part of the country now, the Kaduna state government has commenced the rehabilitation of some federal government-owned roads in the state capital following the collapse of those roads. State government says the intervention is to ensure that road users within the state have accident-free and safe motoring. The roads, which include the Namdi Azikwe Western Bypass and Amadu Belo Road, is being repaired by the Kaduna State Public Works Agency under a direct labor arrangement. This is Kagoro Junction along the Namdi Azikiwe Western Bypass in Kaduna State. The road is in a deplorable condition with some portions of it washed away by the rains. Residents say the 20-kilometer road, which connects Zaria, Kano, and other neighboring states, has been abandoned by Firma. We have been suffering a lot on this road. We are the residents of this area. We know how motorists are suffering because as a result of this bad road, many cars are broken down. The road is already decayed, and we know it's not the fault of this government because this, gov gov this government is new. Now there's excitement from residents and commuters following the commencement of rehabilitation work on the road by the State Public Works Agency. According to the agency's general manager, over a hundred roads in the state capital Zaria and Kafanchan will undergo similar repairs. The reason why the state government come in because the road is immotorable, which is a federal road. And since the road has passed the state, so the state government decided that Kavua as a maintenance agency for all the state uh, roads that we should mobilize our equipment and our staff to come here and make sure we rectify the problem. To ensure timely completion of the project, the excited youth in the area are rendering assistance to the state government officials. Special occupants of this community, we say we should also work hand in hand with them so that we also help them so that we achieve the goal because it's for our own good. It's not really for their own good, and we are very, very grateful. With the official handover of the Namdi Azikiwe Western Bypass and Amadu Belo Road by the federal government to the Kaduna State Government, residents hope that constant interventions such as this by Katwa will keep the roads safe and durable. To the southwest and the education sector, a new vice chancellor on acting capacity 
has emerged for the Abafemi Awolowo University in Oshun State is Professor Anthony Elujaba of the Faculty of Pharmacy. His emergence is coming barely 24 hours after the federal government ordered the Senate of the school to use its internal mechanism in selecting a new vice chancellor. There's been a series of protests against the former vice chancellor, Bamitale Omole, who is accused of mismanaging the resources of the institution, including corrupt practices which resulted in mass protests and subsequent closure of the school. The Senate of the OAU approved the appointment of the vice chancellor. The owner of IFAIR has called for improved government community relations to curb the constant threat to forest reserves. He made the call at a meeting to draft white paper on the management and control of forest reserves in the state. Now, the focus is to stop illegal settlements in forest areas and deforestation of the Shasha Forest Reserve in Ileife. The deforestation of Shasha Forest, Ileife Ocean State, was the focus of this meeting between the state governor, Rauf Arebeshola, the owner of Ife, Oba Adeyeye Ogunwisi, and experts on the environment. They are looking at ways to curb illegal activities by farmers and plant marketers from ravaging the forest and stripping it of its value. It's a worrisome development for everyone here, including the Ife monarch, who also highlighted problems that might occur if the farmers are forced to leave. All the people inside that forest that are deriving economic benefits one way or the other, they should come out and say the truth. When last did they plant trees? They want to depend on government for everything. They don't know that once they cut one tree, they have got 20 years away. Managing the huge forest reserves is no easy tax, and experts and security agencies also lament the damages and challenges they face. Our own job is to ensure that there is conservation of forests in the country, not only because of the revenue that we are going to be getting here, and because of this issue of climate change. The whole world is working toward that now. That there should be how a way to mitigate the climate. We will say that because of a high rate of deforestation going on in Nigeria, in fact, people are saying that we have up to 10%, but we have less than 10%. The more forests you destroy, the more imagined diseases that we have. That forest, Shasha Forest itself and its other neighbors are for our protection, first and foremost. If we destroy it, we are destroying our defense mechanism. Having listened patiently to the contributors, Governor Arik Bashola promised that the state government would develop a policy on forest administration and control. Our state, we have the best policy on forest management administration and control. In the meantime, a panel of inquiry has been set up to look into illegal activities of Shasha Forest Reserve as reported and hopefully stop the illegal entries, demarcation and land reallocation. You're watching news across Nigeria coming up in the oil and gas sector with particular reference to Cross River State. Rather, a Russian firm is seeking to invest in refining oil. Please stay with us.